Hello out there, guys and girls in the community, and welcome again to episode six of Porch Puppy Comics. Where if you can't run with the big dogs, you know what to do. I'm your host today, KJ. Ah, uh, we're here today. My boy here standing in front of you is Mr. Union Jack, my variation of him. Uh, I like to play around with every now and then different costume setups different things like that so i do enjoy showing off art pieces and you know just doodles i call them but i enjoy them as i said in episode five episode six is gonna be first issues new or uh, old and new and uh we have quite a few oddballs here and there in these old news but again we're not going to try to take up a whole lot of time i'm gonna show you this one first uh this book here is Deadpool number one of the ongoing series. It's a wraparound cover. As you can tell from the hand that he's about to go into battle with, that is Sasquatch. Uh, always like this particular run. Always like this particular art in it. Uh, the story was cool, funny. Uh, but when I ordered this book, when I ordered this book, I should have known. You know how the old saying goes, if it's too good to be true, nine times out of ten, it probably is. They wanted $12 for this book. I know, but if I'm not mistaken, it's been a while. But if I'm not mistaken, I believe the shipping was free. But $12 for this book. And, I mean, you can look at it. You know, zoom in on it. You know, it, it looks pretty good. Cover's got a good gloss on it. It's little bit of a break in the color down here, a little line there, uh, you know. But other than that, it presents well. Again, I was proud with it. Being in my PC was good with it. Well, as the book sat there when it came in and I opened it up, do you not know, folks in the community, that when I opened this book up, I said, wow, this is nice for $12. But then there should have been some red flags going up. Like, for one, it was in a bag, but no board. And uh, I said, hmm. So when I happened to take the book out of the bag, do you not know that the insides, can I pull a little jig, clamp it on you? The innards came out of the book. It slipped completely out. And there I was holding the cover of Deadpool number one, and the book itself was laying on my table. Needless to say, I uh, got in touch with the gentleman I brought the book from, and apparently, uh, once he sold it, couldn't get back in touch with him. One of those buyer beware type moments. But I went on, and instead of trashing the book, I kept it. And I said, if I ever decided to get rid of it, I would let people know that, look, the cover is completely detached. Um... Uh, you know, everything is complete, but the book is just detached from the cover. So I kept it. Been in my collection now for probably about three years. But I said this is an honorable mention. Uh, Deadpool number one, y'all. 1997. <laughs> ah, we're moving on. The next book I want to show is Wonder Woman 1987. Her first issue run. I got this from a gentleman, uh, you know, like I said again, uh, the condition, it's something that I can deal with. The condition is great. And I enjoy it. It's a great book. Sorry for that little pause there, y'all. But it's a great book. I like the way he sends his books out. He puts them in. And he puts it. He graded this at about a fine. It's got a uh, little bit of wave in it. Apparently, the collection that he's selling off had had some moisture damage to it. Uh, I guess, like they say, it could use a press. But I'm not one to get the books pressed. I just enjoy them like they are. 
Just glad to have them in my PC. Enjoy it. It's a good book. Wonder Woman number one. Joyce Perez art, y'all. Next book I'm putting up, Batman the Dark Knight. David Finch, Scott Williams stories, but David Finch art. Always like David Finch, and you'll see why when I bring up this next first issue. Uh, David Finch is another good artist. I, like I said, I like the artist. Uh, the storyline, I can get with it. But uh, if the artists don't catch me, because, you know, I always feel like you could always tell a story just by the art. And uh, David Finch is one of those, just like the old old crew, I call them. But his another first issue, another book I really like, like the storyline on. I like this version of Moon Knight. Number one, David Finch also. This was a great storyline, gritty. You know, it... Um, I mean, it was more, to me, geared more towards what I come up with back, you know, when he made his appearance in Werewolf by Night 32-33 and uh, also his uh, two-issue series that he done in uh, Marvel Spotlight. I believe it was 28-29 and uh, then his 1980s run, not to mention the different, uh, you know, guest starrings that he did down through the years before he got his own book in the 80s. Uh, but I like this run of it. Great book. It's a great book. And I also have, coming up, Batman number one, New 52's, Snyder Capullo. Capullo's another great artist I like. Uh, these New 52 Batmans. Let me tell you a quick story. These New 52 Batmans, about, about two years ago, you could order these new 52 number one Batmans, first print, second print, third print, fourth print, for little or nothing. $10, $15 at the max. At the max. Go on there and try to find one now. First printing, second printing, third printing, fourth printing, and try to find them now. But at one time again, had all the printings, which, you know, sometimes there was a color difference, sometimes the trade dress was different. But other than that, you know, it was just... One of those type of books. Another book I'm bringing up is another John Byrne book. Oh, my, my, my. Superman number one. Now, as you're looking at this book here, it was after all this, uh, what was it? Crisis on Infinite Earths. Everything was a startup. John Byrne had the Superman run. I think he ran to like 25, maybe 26 issues. Uh, he done the Legends run. Um, and I mean, this book here, it was a whole retelling of Superman. Outstanding. It was outstanding. Always like this cover. This book here is a beautiful book. Real, real nice. Sharp corners, no spine ticks, no stresses, no color breaks. But ladies and gentlemen in the community, Mikey, uh, as we call him the kingpin, we were out dollar bin diving this man found the first issue of this same book that had to be, if I can use this vernacular, had to be one of the prettiest first issue Superman books I have ever seen. It means just like you just went to the press and got it off. Laid flat, beautiful gloss. We still tease each other about the book today. You know, I told him, hey, I got a first issue Superman, but yeah, mine's better looking than yours. You know how that is, that little camaraderie that you have amongst the community. Let's dip into the old books for a minute. Iron Fist, number one. Been looking for this, had it at one time or another. Actually, the one I had was far better than this one. But again, decent, decent price. You know, it may have a few little rolls on the spine and here and there, little kind of little beveled edge on the cover. But, I mean, it still presents well. It's got a real good gloss to it. It's the first comic book run as far as his own series outside of Marvel Premiere where he made his uh, uh, first appearance out, out of the magazine Deadly Hands of Kung Fu. And I've always liked Iron Fist, especially when they put him up against some heavy hitters like Iron Man. Our next first issue, The True Uncanny Inhumans. Those are my characters right there. Those are the ones that I like 
not only because it's, you know, I've always liked Black Bolt. I feel like they never did do him, give him any justice. You know, uh, he's a powerful character, you know, and uh, this set only ran, I believe, 12 issues. But if you can get your hands on all 12 issues, it's a good read. It's, it's really a good read. And I just, like I said, it's, it's a number one. Uh, you can still tell if you're close in on it. It's kind of like a little bit of breaks right in here. Uh, the spine, there's a little spine tick here and there. But again, I can deal with the condition. This is Porch Puppy Comics, y'all. And this will be the true test of it right here. Was looking for uh, Miss Marvel, number one, from the 70s. Well, I found one, and I'm going to tell y'all how much I paid for this one. I paid, if I'm not mistaken, $15 for this book. Now, as you can see, up here in the corner, there's a little piece out of the corner right there where the uh, comic code stamp is right up in here. Not a big chunk, but just a little piece. But if you can look at the book, you know, I mean, it's still a sharp book. It's a sharp book. I made, uh, you know, uh, my my best offer. Uh, watched it. Next thing I know, he accepted it. You know, so now it's back in my collection. I don't mind if it's missing a wee piece of the corner there. I can dig it. The next book I had gotten rid of that I thought I'd never get back. But even in this condition, I like it because I like this character. Ladies and gentlemen, I... Introduce to you, Mr. Booster Gold, number one. Booster Gold, I like this character ever since they came out with it. Collected the run originally when it came out. An 80s run book. Uh, the storyline was good. He teamed up with some great heroes. You know, they put Superman in it. You know, he teamed up with the Legion of Superheroes. You know, he his sidekick, Blue Beetle, you know, uh, the second Blue Beetle. And, uh, I mean, it was a good, it was a good setup and his backstory was cool. The way they had him set up, you know, uh, came from the future to make a name for himself. You know, uh, he wanted to have his name plastered on a soda pops, so, uh, uh, vehicles named after of him, C cologne, different things. He was gonna, he wanted that fame and fortune, but ended up being a superhero instead. Booster Gold, number one. If you got your chance to get your hands on the first 10 issues, do yourself a favor. You can't go wrong. Our next book, Commandy. He is the last boy on earth. I like this cover. Couldn't stand Commandy back in the day. As you can see, there's a crease running across the cover here. But I couldn't stand this character. A friend of mine, Chris, he loved the book, collected all of them. I think he went up to 50-something, maybe 60-something issues. But uh, went back and having to run across a first issue, read it, got into it. Now I'm looking for at least the first 10. If I can get the first 10, I will enjoy it. If you open this up, you ever get this book and open it up, it's a big splash page. I love how they've done the splash pages in the, in the 60s and the 70s and the 80s. They've done a few, but the 60s and 70s were famous for them. And this splash page is something almost right out of Planet of the Apes. Great book. Great book. Our next couple of books, these are what I'm going to call rapid fire because I got these in one lot. And uh, I told you, I like the patriotic heroes, Captain America, uh, The Shield, um, Union Jack, different uh, heroes like that. I've always liked them ever since I was a kid. So, you know, Archie Comics used to put out a character called Sh Shield and they had two variations of them. Well, they tried to bring him back into Mighty Crusaders and Lightfield, Mr. Rob, done several covers. So there is cover number one. I don't know if it's A or B. I didn't get a chance to check that out to see if it was A or B, but these are all one shots. But he done uh, all the covers for the one shots. Here's the next one. Mm hmm. Here's the next one. And last but not least, a throwback to the 50s or 40s and 50s in The Shield. Nice character. Always like The Shield. Real good character, y'all. Let me move this out of the way. Union Jack staring at y'all again. 
Next book, Suicide Squad, number one, new 52. This is a nice run of them. You know, it's dealing with, uh, if I'm not mistaken, this is the Joker's daughter, Harlequin, of course. Uh, let me see. I believe this is uh, Deathstroke, Black Manta. And I believe down here in the chains is um, Deadshot and Amanda Waller. And uh, this was a good read. This storyline right here in the New 52. A lot of people gave the New 52 run of comics when DC relaunched them a lot of grief. But they were really, really good reads, some of them, you know. And now if you go back and try to find them, well, you're going to pay a little bit. Depending on which issues you get. The next book. Another team I like, this variation, Thunderbolts. This is the first run of Thunderbolts. You know, they made their appearance in The Incredible Hulk. And then they spun out of that into their own series. Another good run. Anytime you've got a Goliath-type character in a book, that's what drew me always to the Legion of Superheroes because they always had a giant in there and Colossal Boy. And uh, always dug it. And then, you know, with this one here, even with the Avengers, you know, you had Ant-Man that he couldn't make up his mind if he's going to be Ant-Man today or Goliath today or Giant Man today or whatever, but still. But this one, they stayed pretty consistent. Always loved it. It was a great book. This lineup was great. Okay, next. McFarlane again. The Black and Silver First Issue Spider-Man. They had a first issue that was all his first issues. They had the regular cover, which was kind of purplish looking. They had this one that was silver and black. They had a gold and black. And I think they had one more, if I'm not mistaken. I think it might have been a total of five. But uh, this is an iconic cover. It's, it's homaged in so many different books. Just like that 300th issue cover. I mean, everybody's used it. I mean, from Marvel, DC, and Independence. You know, and so it was a great book. This is a great read. I like this run of Spider-Man. All right, coming up on the last ones. Trying to get out your hair real quick. Here we go. Six Gun Heroes featuring Gunmaster and Bullet Boy. I always liked these particular Charlton books, but as they say, the paper that they was made on was really cheap paper. And if you can find one in better condition than this, and then upwards, you're doing real good. But I found this one, I enjoyed it, and I picked it up. And then I'm going to show you a find, which you don't really realize. He come out in his own book. Spine is rolled pretty good on this one, but it still yet presents well. Got a lot of color to it, a lot of gloss. This is Gun Master and Bullet Boy number one. Couldn't believe it. Got in there because they don't have their numbering on their covers for some odd reason. But not only did I run across number one, but there was number two as well. Enjoyed the book. I like this character. I've, I've always, you know, back in the day, it was a country song that used to say, I think it was uh, Willie Nelson might have sung it, that my heroes have always been cowboys. Well, that was true for me. Back in the day, I used to run around, had two six-shooters just like the Lone Ranger. Uh, that was my hero at that particular time. And so anytime I run across a, a nice Western book, I always pick them up because I really do enjoy them. Okay, y'all. Coming up on the last two, the Lone Ranger knockoff, the Masked Raider, and Talon, the Golden Eagle. This man had a giant Golden Eagle that helped him catch the villains and the rustlers and different things like that. And of course, he's carrying the two six shooters, you know, uh, blatantly a Lone Ranger ripoff, but it was still a great book. Never seen it, just ran across it. This book is circa 1952. And uh, I just, I've, I've had it. If I, Even if I sold off my collection, I managed to keep this one and this last book I'm going to show you. This last book I'm going to show you is, boom, The Lone Rider. Another mask hero, two-gun hero. Uh, this book here, first issue, as you can tell, 
you know, if I was one of those people that wanted to get the book cleaned, it could stand a cleaning. The staples on them are kind of rusted, but I've had this book in my collection for several years. This book here is the first issue circa 1948, and I love this book. It is a great Western I mean, the inside art and everything is just what you would expect back in the 1940s and 50s, just like with the Mask Raider, but it was, it's still a great book. Both of these books are 10 cent issues, and that's another thing I like about it. But then too, if you was to go online and look up this book, you'll find other, you know, iterations of it as far as they brought them out, you know, later on and put them in a, a like a, you know, companion book so to speak but if you want the one that's probably the most expensive would probably be the one where it's a photo cover i don't know if it's number seven or number nine but in that particular book if i'm not mistaken that uh stan lee himself is dressed up in the in the cowboy garb on the cover as a photo cover with him dressed up in this cowboy's suit you know, with the mask and everything. And uh, it's it's a nice book. If you can find it, I mean, you know, I'm telling you, the only closest thing I've came to seeing it was uh, on eBay and then other sites. But yet and still, it, it's, it's a nice book, and I'm proud to have these in my collection. Uh, as I said, I've got some other stuff that I'll be showing you down the road as we go on. Probably going to try to put out maybe one more video this week. Uh, like I said, you know, this is episode six. We want you to like, share, subscribe, ring the notification bell, you know, so you know when the videos are coming out. Tell your friends, tell your neighbors, tell those in the community. And don't be scared or, or, or afraid or warded off because as I told you at the beginning, I am a preacher. So if I open up my channel with saying, I thank the Lord, I do. I thank the Lord. I thank the Lord for being able to do this. I thank the Lord for all of you to be able to do this. And know this, you all, that the Lord loves you and he cares. He knows. He cares. And just take time out, out of your day, to just thank him for just who he is. Because he's wonderful. And everything that's going on around us, Everybody wants to give praise, glory, and honor to this one, that one, and the other one. But the one person that helps you to wake up in the morning, it's not your watch, it's not your clock, it's not your phone, is he, Jesus Christ. He is the one. And as I said, he loves and he cares. God bless you all. Hope to see you around in episode seven. We're just going to go potluck episode seven. I think you'll like it. Tune in. Have a blessed day. God bless you.